Hi out there to all of my fellow crafty folks. My name is Autumn. This is a new channel called Craftical Living. And I focus on uh, the skills that I'm building for um, creative independence and creative expression. I am starting with a roundup of six spindles and six different kinds of wool. And uh, so today we will be talking about um, this spindle from uh, Snyder Spindles. It's the top whorl gear. It's a rim weighted top whorl spindle. Um, this is the high low spindle from Shocked. Um, so I will be using it as a top whorl spindle. I have this low whorl spindle from Viscount Turning. Looks like Viscount, Viscount Turning on Etsy. Um, and this is a spindle by a company called Fiber Artist. It's a top whorl spindle that I also got on Etsy. I have this spindle, um, this is a ginormous spindle from a long-standing fiber company called Lacy's or Lassus or Lacus. Lacy's is what I, how I pronounce it. Um, hopefully somebody out there will know the correct pronunciation of that and tell me. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, and this one. This is a the one arm Turk from the Dancing Goats on Etsy. So I will go ahead and get started. Um, the the fiber I'm using is the six sheep sampler uh, by Frabjus Fibers, and it comes in this long. Uh, clear plastic um, package. Um, I use plastic. I, turn, I cut it up into strips and I've been using it to form uh, um, what I'm going to weave. I'm going to weave uh, um, mats from it um, eventually. Probably for use under uh, reusable cloth pee pads or uh, outdoor mats. Anyway, so I will start with the low whorl spindle by Viscount Turning. And I'm going to back up. This is the um, six sheep uh, rambouillet. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. And I'm sure you can see it spin. Yay! Um, so, um, this is olive wood. It is a rim weighted spindle. I believe it looks like it's a maple shaft. As you can see, I've already been doing some spinning on this. Um, with the Fragis Fibers six sheep sampler, they have a little color code. Um, color-coded um, tag ah, my fiber falls and uh, the reddish purple is the rambouillet the chestnut brown is blue space luster the, the purple is Falkland the midnight blue is Targi the blue spruce is Polwarth and the spruce green is Merino so for those of you, I'm new to spinning wool. Mostly I've been spinning uh, goat fibers like cashmere and um, well, I spun merino a lot. Um, silk, I do a lot of silk. Um, so goat, silk, um, a lot of silk. And silk blends camel, yak, 
things like that. I tend to go for the fi fine fibers. I ignore, I have actually quite a much larger uh, collection of uh, spindles, but most of the spindles I use are pocket size because I do a lot of spin, uh, spinning when I am out on the go, um, either in the car with my husband driving or standing in line at the UPS store. But uh, um, holding it up high, I should probably also um, put my half hitch up higher. One of the things I'm finding is that um, I've been told that it helps to wind your cup more towards the middle of the shaft. I think I got that from Respect the Spindle, which I've been reading. Uh, great book by Abby Frankmont, which has to go back to the library today, so I have a copy for myself on the way. Um, but uh, also, just tying that half inch up near the top helps it wobble a little bit less. So this is the olive wood Viscount turning spindle with the Rambouillet. And I, you know, I'm just now learning about the different wools because I do tend more towards goat and dog um, and cat fiber, ch uh, Chengora. Uh, but I do really like the really soft, um, really soft bouncy wools for really fine, like sport weight and fingering weight um, spinning yarn when I am spinning on my wheel on my Ashford Joy 2. Um, this reminds me of another wool that we will get to uh, called Tarky. It's a um, North American or, ah, if I can tie a half hitch. I'm just gonna show you, you know, I'm coming as I am because if I wait until I have everything perfect, I just won't ever get around to making videos. And the only way to actually get decent at videos is to practice. So I am going to share with you my practice. So you're going to see it in all of its uh, clumsy glory. So it reminds me of Targi in its being soft and fluffy and uh, So I like this, the Rambouillet. I, I bought the six sheep sampler because I wanted to try new wools and I'm very glad I did. So just to show you kind of what it looks like. Let's see, what's that staple length? I think that's one of my hairs in there. So that feels like one, two, like a three inch staple length. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make this so that you can the camera can focus on it. Working on practicing these skills. Yeah. I don't know if you can be able to focus it, but it, it's got a lot of crimp. Um little itty bitty tiny little crimp in it. And uh just really slides. So that's the Rimbouillet uh, wool with the Viscount turning olive wood bottom whorl from Etsy. And then I have the purple, this is the purple, this is the It's like the chestnut brown, which is blue faced Lester. So, and let's go for this is longer. Yeah, that looks like the chestnut brown. I'm keeping these in organza bags just because I do process fleeces 
that have moths in them. I don't do it inside, but uh, one of the things that I have learned is that if it's in plastic, it doesn't get moved, it doesn't get agitated uh, when I move things around. And so it's actually easier for moths to infest things um, because the moths are looking to remain undisturbed. Um, whereas if I have it in organza, as I move it around, it's getting the air moved, the fiber moved. So this is, I believe the blue face lester. That looks like like a one, two, four to five inch staple length. Let me just confirm that. This one looks like purple. That's that is the purple. And that is from Spunky Eclectic. No, that's from Southern Cross Fiber. Um, there we go. Ah, foam top falling down. This is the other rest of it. So blue face Lester. And let's see here. Let's do the Falkland on the biggest spindle. So um, this is the gear spindle from, I believe from Snyder Spindles. And this looks like it's a big spindle with a thick shaft. It looks like it would be really heavy, but it is not. Um, this is extraordinarily lightweight. Yes, this is a Snyder spindle. This is 35 grams, but uh, so it's much, much bigger. It's got a square, uh, squared off hook. It's much bigger than I normally uh, am used to using. So I'm just going to spin myself a leaner. I really like the much finer singles. I almost always do two ply. Um, single or uh, yarn so and I like the really fine I got into this because I'm into sock yarn and I wanted to make my own sock yarn so this is nicely balanced I'm just now learning to spin with top whirl, top whirl spindles just so you can see it it's got a nice long spin Um, yeah, I, when I opened this up, it was much bigger than I thought it would be. And I wasn't sure that I was going to keep it. Um, but I do know that I need to start having, come around the back, uh, some bigger spindles around. If I can get Um, for if only for like plying, of course. Yeah. So yeah, so new to top whirl spindles, but as far as beginner spindle goes, I could definitely recommend this. So that is the Snyder spindles. Uh, I think this is the full size gear. That he, I know he has a medium size top whirl gear as well. So, Snyder. Uh, then we have the shocked high-low spindle. So you can, excuse me, it's got a little notch so that you can spin it as a low whirl spindle. So why don't I just try both? Um, let us use the 
um, blue spruce Polworth on this. Um, so we have blue spruce, midnight blue. Okay, so of the blues, which one is midnight blue, blue spruce, and spruce green. So I'm guessing this is the spruce green. I'm guessing this is the midnight blue. That's right, this one came with a break in it, which is fine for a uh, top. So, uh, Midnight Blue, Blue Spruce, let's see if I can get Night Blue, Blue Spruce, and Spruce Green, which they're showing up different. So, Midnight Blue is Targi. Let me just go ahead and spin the Targi on the shocked Hilo. So when I first got this, I started out using it as a low whorl spindle, but I wanted to learn to spin top whorl because the nice thing about top whorl is you can uh, flick it by running it along your thigh, which, um, you know, after flicking this way, um, if you have any sort of carpal tunnel or tendonitis like I do, uh, that becomes an issue. Now, I just generally tend to, or maybe I'll use the leader. I stuck a silk leader on here because I have tons and tons and tons of silk. Oh, no, no, this was a silk yarn sample that I got from an export company I buy from in India. So let me put my half hitch on. And there we go. So this is using it as a low whorl spindle. The nice thing about the low whorl spindles is if you can spin them really slow. Um, so if you want a nice, fluffy, airy, open yarn. Um, this is a fairly heavy spindle. I haven't weighed it. Um, I know they have multiple sizes of spindle but uh, um, this one is fairly heavy I rarely use it um, because I really am not spinning the thicker yarns so then switching over to use it as a top whorl spindle um, I think this one works better as a top whorl spindle, even though I have not yet gotten the hang of keeping it the way that it comes. The hook is fairly big, and so it ends up hanging off the back of that hook, um, which I find, you know, if I'm doing low speed spinning, ends up with a lot of wobble. Um, but for people who are looking to spin a lot of yarn really fast 
on a fiber that can handle it, this would be a great spindle. Just solid, simple, made by shock. It's got a nice, uh, nice notch. Um, and I just turned the hook so the notch is behind it. I wonder, maybe, actually, probably would work better if I, yeah, okay, there we go. I just needed to turn it so the notch was, it was not spinning from the back. I need to turn it. So that it's sideways. That would help. You learn something new every day if you're not careful. Okay, so that's why, that's how that spindle wants to work. So that is the Midnight Blue uh, Targi with the Shocked High Low Spindle. Okay. Let us do the, let's see, if I remember correctly, Polworth is a really nice long. Yeah, that might be good. Um, merino, this merino is fairly long, but I want, um, like Romney would be good. Let's see, we haven't done the purple is the Falkland. The next spindle is really, really big and really heavy and almost needs to be a support spindle, even if you're spinning really thick. I, uh, maybe as a plying spindle, it would be good. So this is the purple Falkland. Oh yeah, that might be good. Um, this fiber does come compacted. So little bits of fluff on my fluff. ever going battle ever constant battle so the Falkland is a nice long probably six inches it's a grippy fiber it's also really fluffy it's not the softest but it's not rough like I have used Romney and Romney tends to be well I'm mostly getting local Romney so it still has some lanolin in it and that might be part of it but what I've been doing is not so much pre-drafting as just I mean like very slightly drafting it to open up the fiber so this is the Lacy spindle and this spindle comes disassembled so just to give you an idea of how big, this is like a, it's bigger than the palm of my hand. It's like a, oh, it's like five inches wide, I want to say. Not quite six inches, but not far off. This is really heavy, really heavy spindle. So uh, this is the kind of spindle that I really am going to need a hefty leader for. I am actually going to probably want more fiber than this because otherwise it's just going to fall on. This thing has fallen many times. Like, uh, I, I don't, I don't really use it, um, because I can't think of a circumstance where it would work best for what I need yet. Um, it's kind of like just such a novelty. I'm just going to tie an overhand knot in this. So the notch <clears throat> is really actually not very pronounced at all, which uh, can be problematic with a heavy spindle like this. So I have been, oh yeah, you need to have like some, the hands, I forgot the hand strength on this one needed. If you're spinning really thick, yarns and you want a nice long slow spin it takes a lot of hand strength to uh to flick it but uh 
but it'll spin a long time. Probably would not necessarily use this for um, drop spinning because of just how heavy it is. I tried drop spinning on it and it just, it falls and like this thing dents the floor. It's that heavy. Um, I think maybe I'm good enough to be able to drop spin. So it uh, really pulls on your fiber. This, uh, this is the purple is the Falkland. This actually is a really, really good spindle. I think probably this is not something I'd want to spin from the top. I'd want to spin from the fold. From like the, or, uh, yeah. So, um, let me spin higher up so you can see. Or actually point the camera down so you can see. So, on my cup. Uh, for a bottom whorl spindle, the uh, whorl is farther up the shaft than I tend to prefer, but I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing. Um, because I find that the really low bottom whorl spindles, if you spin thick yarns, and you're using Falkland or Romney, um, probably like I haven't tried Icelandic yet, but I suspect that would be good. If you're spinning from the lock um, or spinning in the grease, this would probably be a fantastic spindle. It spins for a really long time, it spins really slowly. Um, and if you're spinning standing up, I imagine this would be a great spindle. I'm probably going to convert this to a kick spindle just because of how ginormous it is. So that's the Falkland with the Lacy's drop spindle. Let's see, next one is the Fiber Artist, uh, Fiber Artist spindle from Etsy. Fiber Artist is uh, a brand I see in several stores and uh, this one is pretty lightweight um, I'd say it's got a thick shaft I'd say it's probably about the weight of the Snyder gear spindle that I was looking earlier it is rim weighted but it's close into the center so um, except for the fact that it's got this big looks like a 3 8 inch dowel shaft and this looks like maple to me um let's see we did the chestnut brown next is blue spruce polworth and spruce green merino we'll do the polworth so polworth is Another really open. It feels similar to the Targi. High crimp. It's more grippy than the Targi and the Rambouillet. But, uh, very bouncy wool. That looks like like a four to five inch, just a little bit more variation in the staple length. Up a little leader here. Got one, two, 
See on that hook. I guess it's uh, far less grippy than I thought it was. This has some nice smooth slide to it. It feels like it would be grippy, but actually drafts really easy. And I can actually draft this really thin. Um, So I could probably use this for some medium low twist fingering for support. Um, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So that is the Farber Artist. I, you know, as much as my uh, aesthetics say I want this really thin, slender shaft when it comes to actually spinning my joints, my uh, arm, my hands, my uh, wrists, oops, actually opposite way. That's the first time trying that. Uh, they all say they want a thick shaft it's easier on the joints so yeah if I'm gonna be spinning singles on a top spindle I may switch to an S twist oh gee so that is the Paul Worth on the fiber artist top whirl spindle the last spindle I have is the One Arm Turk by um, Robin at The Dancing Goats on Etsy. And I really like this. It's a relatively new concept. I do a lot of Turkish spindle spinning. And uh, so um, I was really excited. This one's made in cherry and I believe that that looks like an oak um, shaft. He does this, uh, this, um, it's like this sparkle. Uh, it is a, um, some sort of process that basically burns on fiber or burn it, it lights on fire and it crawls up the shaft and creates this unique there's no uh, shaft that's the same. If you look on his uh, Etsy page, you'll see what it is. It's, uh, he's got some sort of name for it. Basically, it's a randomly nature-formed rune. So this is the one-armed one -armed Turk. This is um, bigger than I, again, bigger than I normally use. I normally use Turkish spindles. I use a lot of Turkish spindles. And uh, I rarely, rarely use uh, medium big ones like this. But I couldn't help myself because when people invent something, when it comes to fiber, because I'm all about the inventing and the doing new things, uh, not reinventing the wheel, but maybe uh, repurposing the wheel. Uh, I really do like being able to pull central pole balls. So this has got a low, um, steady, long spin. Um, still need to work with it, but the nice thing is basically um, this is a combination of the Basque spindle um, that basically you have um, these spool looking things that go on the shaft and the Turkish spindle and then you wind it like a nostopina, like a, a ball winding stick. You crisscross the point where the shaft meets. 
chest meets the um, the arm or the bone, depending on what you want to call it. So, and uh, so when you want to switch, you just go to the other side. He has this thing where you can basically go under, over, under, over, under over kind of like you do with the uh, regular Turkish spindle where you do two um, over and one under. I just like to just wrap it, crisscross it across the uh, shaft. Yeah. Part of the reason I got into spinning was to improve my um, and eye coordination. So when I am done wrapping it across one way and I'm about to switch to the other side to be more even, I just rotate across the top of the shaft. So, so this is the last one. It is the Merino Fragis Fibers with the, with, uh, it's called the Dancing Goats, all one word. Robin at the Dancing Goats Etsy shop. And there are several different Dancing Goats Etsy shops, so make sure it's the Dancing Goats on Etsy. Not the Dancing Goat, not Dancing Goats, but the Dancing Goats on Etsy. And he has different hardwoods. They are each one of a kind. I am having him I've asked him to make me a custom half size version for putting in my pocket or my purse. So that's it for today. I know this is a really long video. Um, and uh, I don't expect a lot of people will be watching it. Uh, this is really just about practice and documenting how um, I am working along the path towards making better videos and creating value for other people on YouTube. Um, I've been especially grateful to Evie over at Jillian Eve, uh, her YouTube and her Patreon channel. Uh, I want to say Lori over at Soulful Spinning. Those are just if you want to spin and uh, just hear peaceful piano and look up every now and then and see somebody else doing something beautiful with their fiber. Uh, soulful spinning is great for that. Um, don't remember expertly died. I want to say her name is Catherine. She does some really good stuff on, uh, working with cashmere and dyeing with natural dyes and other kinds of dyes. Who else do I watch? Fiber love diary is good. Um, I think I'm not going to do the blooper reels like some of the other channels do. We'll see. Um, yeah, those are the main ones I've been watching. Soulful Spinning, Jillian Eve, Expertly Died, uh, Kamaj Fiber Arts, Mary Egbert's channel is good. But those are the main ones for right now that I've been watching. Thank you guys very much. Uh, my next video will probably be on combing pagora, um, cashmere, and mohair. Pagora is an angora pygmy um, hybrid, new breed from the 70s until now. Uh, came out of the United States. So pagora, um, cashgora, um, nigora, Nigerian dwarf angora hybrid. Um, yeah. So various mohair and cashmere producing um, goat breeds. I'm going to do a video on um, uh, prepping or processing Samoyed and Great Pyrenees dog fleeces and spinning them into yarn. And uh, um, I've got a kind of a little process I invented for dehairing the last fluff when carding and combing um, still leaves um, just something to add to the no fleece left behind which by the way if you have not um, searched for no fleece left behind on YouTube I highly recommend it um, 
So yeah, look forward to chatting with you all. Thank you very much, fellow Craftical folks, and I will talk to you soon.